product. This is the Laundry Day Tea uh, pattern, and I brought it into Corel so that I could uh, shorten the shoulder, raise the neckline, and alter sleeves and things like that. And Corel is a program that I've been using since the 80s, and um, it's I'm, I'm very used to it. I have Illustrator and Inkscape, but this is my preferred software to use. So I'm going to try to make everything work, if I can, in Corel. Now, yesterday, I was able to bring a PDF pattern that I generated in PDF Stitcher. I was able to bring it into Corel without it showing it as being a, a, a corrupted file. So I don't know if the little gremlins got in my computer last night, but now Corel Draw does not want to open the patterns that I generate in PDF Stitcher. And the main reason I'm using PDF Stitcher in this instance is because I want the darker lines and I want to isolate um, just one size in this Laundry Day T. And I, um, I found that it's just a lot quicker to do it this way. And I have to use a drawing program to do my alterations so that I don't have to trace the pattern on paper first. That's going to defeat my purpose. So uh, just to uh, reference and remind myself all the steps that I went through to do this, I opened up PDF Stitcher first, and I selected the input file. And so I'm using the Laundry Day T projector file because it has layers that I can uh, eliminate if I want to. And then I set my uh, output as um, this. I'm going to change it to a different name so that I can remember. So I'm just going to call this video one. My computer has to think about it for a little bit. So in this case, it's one large page. So there's there's only one page that's in here. But you would, uh, if you had, if you were stitching something together, you would have to choose the pages. Um, inches is what I chose, and I left that checked. On to the next page. Uh, the tiling does not matter in this case because it's one page. Uh, layers, I chose the large size. I left the titles on. And for the grid, I wanted to keep the grid so that I could make sure that Corel brings it in to scale. And so you just highlight it, go over here and uh, click on the color thing and choose something different that you're not already using. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. All right. And so when I chose this different color, I only want to apply it to the layer and the name of that layer is one inch grid. And so I want to only apply it to that. So you just click on that and then you would say generate PDF. And it doesn't take a long time unless you're on camera uh, videotaping. All right, it should be finished. So I'm going to go over to that folder and I should have already had that folder open to make this go quicker. All right, so I'm going to go back to Corel Draw, and this seems like a lot of extra steps, but um, it's what I had to do. So I'm going to delete this one because I don't need it. Um, I'm going to um, first try to drag this into Corel Draw and see if it gives me an error message. So this is the one that just came from PDF Stitcher. I just drag it over, click OK, and it. this is the error message that I'm getting today. Well, I don't want to use any other program but Corel, so I'm going to try a workaround. So what I've had to do is I'm going to double click on it and open it in Adobe. And so you see my little pink grid here. And so what I had to do was save it from Adobe. I couldn't go in here and say save as because it still gave me a corrupt, corrupted uh, error message. So I saved it as other. And so maybe Adobe is processing it into something that Corel can read. I have no idea what's happening here, but I just went in here randomly chose something and it happened to work. So I chose save as other 
and I went into this reader extended and I chose the very first option here and I chose a name so I'm gonna say O2 and save and then now I don't need Adobe anymore I'm back in my Corel program and now I can drag it in here and uh, it should take it. So there it is. So here's the reason why I changed the grid uh, to pink. It's because I want to isolate it by color and delete it when I don't need it anymore. But for now, I want to draw, I chose a rectangle tool and I want to draw, I need, it really needs to be black. So I would need to change this outline color, but not going to do it right now going to change it to one inch by one inch and then I am going to drag it into the grid and it seemed to snap to the grid. I want to make sure that grid equals one inch and that Corel draw brought it in the way it needed to. I'm going to leave that little square there for now and so what we want to do is go to edit, find and replace or you can hit control F and um, I already had it open so it closed it so let me reopen that so what I want to do is go up here in the drop down box and choose replace objects even though we're not replacing anything then in the find area you're going to click the drop down for a color choose the eyedropper and come in here and um, and choose this pink that just hover your eyedropper and it'll land on the that pink so once that's done, I just click away from it, and then I choose all of these things. I don't know which ones work, but I just leave them all checked. And I only want to do this on the current page, and then I'll say Find All. I'll click on that. So now it's got these little circles showing that it's selecting something in the group. And so while they're selected, I can press the Delete key, and the grid goes away. But my little square that I drew... I want to duplicate that by pressing Control D a whole bunch of times so I can have copies for each one of my patterns. Um, let me just do that, just do a few of them. And um, right now all the patterns are joined together, so I just selected it and I'm going to press Control U to ungroup them, and they should be separate now. If not, we may need to ungroup again, but you see it's going to now break everything down into a bunch of tiny pieces. So what you want to do is select each pattern and control G so that you can move that pattern around by itself. So this gives you the option of rearranging your patterns. And so what I would do after I isolate each pattern and group all of its components together, I would, you know, just drag a little square uh, calibration tool into each pattern so I can double check once I get it to the projector and then just group all that together. So I'm going through this step pretty fast because um, I, I want to talk about another step that I had to do. So um, anyway I'm going to go over to my uh, my finished pattern which is on this page and you'll see that uh, once I got all my pattern pieces um, the way I wanted them, I um, I had left it a small page that would just fit all the patterns. Well, what happened was I couldn't scroll all the way over to uh, the left or the bottom or the top once I got it over to the projector. Once I lay my fabric on the cutting table, especially with the knits or the slinky fabrics, I don't want to be moving the fabric to place it under the pattern image. I want to move the pattern projection uh, just like I would a paper pattern. So once I get my fabric situated, I don't want to mess with it. So I was finding that if I wanted to scroll, say, this pattern right here uh, onto the fabric, um, I only had a small margin, so when the Adobe would get to the end of that margin, it wouldn't let me scroll any farther. So I made some giant margins all the way around so I could scroll um, as much as as I needed to. Um, so what how I did that was I went over to layout page size. 
and I kept increasing this until I got it to where uh, it was working uh, the way I wanted it to. So um, anyway, I'm going to have a short video showing it actually on the fabric. It, it doesn't show up very well on the video because I had to turn the lights off in my sewing room, but it kind of give you an idea how um, how I'm using it with Adobe. I like to use the arrow keys in Adobe once I get my projector going because I can fine tune where the pattern lands on my fabric. So uh, the other option would be to take each pattern piece and put it on a separate page by itself. But um, I like them all on the same one. Once I get it loaded in my laptop, I don't want to have to be opening separate documents. So once I've got my page and everything situated in Corel, I now have to export it to a PDF because I like using Adobe to project from instead of Corel Draw because it's easier to do my Zoom settings and, and, and all of that. So um, I'm going to go File, Export, and I'm going to say export this page only. I'm going to give it a name and a, a location and then go ahead and export it. So um, anyway, this is how I did my workaround of uh, being able to bring my patterns into Corel Draw and to do my alterations. All right, I'm going to try to get a piece of white paper so that you can actually see my pattern. And there is the pattern. And this is just some scrap fabric, but when I originally cut this pattern out, I had some places that I I needed to place precisely and I don't want to slide my fabric around to try to get it under the pattern. I prefer to move the pattern in just like I would if it were paper. And so I'm using the arrow keys and I'm going to leave the white paper here. I'm using the arrow keys in Adobe on my laptop to move the pattern. And so if I didn't have that humongous margin around the pattern, it limited me how much I would could scroll. I would get all the way over to the edge of the page and still couldn't position my pattern exactly where I wanted it. And for instance, this pattern I might would, um, let's see if I can get the arrow, I might would center it over these two little objects there. And you can see my pattern edge right here and I would try to center it over that. So that's the reason that I um, was mentioning that I had to um, increase that margin or else have each pattern on its own separate page. So some of you that's been doing this for a long time may have already figured out a better way to do this but I'm trying to work with the software that I like to use and this is what I've come up with so far.